The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our God who creates us, redeems us, and makes us a holy people. Amen. A come from away, put that in quotes, a come from away is what you would be called if you visited Newfoundland. Come from away is what they call strangers from out of town. Come from away is also the title of a musical that I was blessed to experience in Washington DC before it made its way to Broadway. Come from away, the musical introduces us to the remarkable story of what unfolded in the small Canadian town of Gander, Newfoundland in the wake of the terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001. Everybody has a 9-11 story. Where were you that morning? Like many of us, the folks of Gander were all enjoying the beautiful weather that morning and going about their business. And then the first reports of the attacks came in. Shortly thereafter, in an unprecedented move, all US airspace was closed. Now the small town of Gander, population 9,000, happens to have a very large airport. Before jumbo jets, planes that crossed the Atlantic would stop there for fueling. But by 2001, those busy days were long past. That particular day, the air traffic controllers in, at the Gander Airport were expecting about eight airplanes to land. Instead, they got 38. Now, those 38 planes were not just stopping by only to take off again. They were grounded indefinitely. And with those 38 planes came all the passengers on them from all over the world. So that the population of their small town nearly doubled in the span of a few hours. What's a town with one hotel to do when some 8,000 people arrive on its doorstep in the space of a couple of hours unannounced to stay for an unspecified amount of time. Can you imagine? What happens is nothing short of remarkable. Not unlike Simon and Andrew and James and John in our gospel reading today, the people of Gander drop everything in an instant to follow Jesus. They closed their schools, their community centers, and their hockey rink, and they open their hearts. On a moment's notice, they transform their schools into dormitories, their community centers into dining halls, and a hockey rink into a giant refrigerator. All high school students are enlisted to serve. 
everyone stops doing what they're doing to welcome and help these people, cooking, taking care of them, and then they bring them into their homes without knowing who they are and without knowing what else is still yet to happen. The come from aways, meanwhile, make lifetime friendships. They fall in love and their lives change. The night I saw the play, former First Lady Laura Bush was sitting across the aisle from me. But so also was the humble American Airlines pilot, Airlines pilot who is exalted as a main character in the show. I had the opportunity to talk with that real life pilot afterwards. I congratulated her, yes, her, and thanked her for her courage. She downplayed it all and said to me, I was only doing my job. One stranded passenger said of all the players, they exhibited the humility, decency, and general, let's just get to it, sensibility of the human spirit. The story and the way it is told in spirit and in song on the stage touched me very deeply. And I mean deeply. I think I may have cried through the whole thing. Sometimes they were tears of deep sorrow, but most of the time they were tears of deep gratitude and joy. When I returned to Michigan, I was sharing my experience with my husband, Barry, and our son, Andrew. And I reflected with them. I think the reason I was so moved is that this is the way I would really like to be deep down. And without missing a beat, our son, Andrew, said, you mean like grandma? He got it like grandma, his grandma, my mother, followed Jesus too. And when Jesus invited her to follow him, he wasn't asking her to fish for people. Jesus meets us where we are. Fishing for people was Jesus' instruction for fishermen. Fishing wasn't her gig, but feeding was. I imagine Jesus saying, follow me, Barbara, and I will make you feed people. As a little girl, she once discovered a family two blocks down the street who didn't have enough to eat. What did she do? She went home, picked up food from her family's kitchen cupboard and walked it over to them. During the years I was growing up, there was always someone she was feeding. She always bought extra groceries, which one of us, which either me or one of my three brothers would deliver on her behalf. The groceries may have been for our 87 year old neighbor, Eva, or for Dolores, a single mother of four, or for Bill, a middle-aged man with a de de developmental disability. And there were others. These don't even include the people our pastor father brought home, sometimes to live under our roof as a member of our family. We had so much, our dad said, and they had so little. Thank goodness my dad married someone who followed Jesus the way she did. She was so generous that my dad would tease her about it. He told her, that she shouldn't listen to his sermons about stewardship because when she did, she would always want to give more of their money away. Tom Brokaw made a documentary about the 9-11 story of Gander. In the course of the documentary, he raises the question, what is it about tragedy 
that brings out the good in people. At these times, regardless of our religious persuasion or race or nationality or politics, we seem compelled to work together in cooperation, in understanding, and with compassion. We see untold stories of this phenomenon. All of a sudden, people start acting a little more like Jesus. Like he's right there saying, follow me and I will make you use whoever you are, whatever you have, and to do what matters to God. And for the most part, we do. I think that cooperation and understanding and compassion is actually the face of our God. The presence of the mystical body of Christ who makes himself known in some way in every situation that is beyond human capacity to endure. That's what happens when we follow Jesus. He becomes manifest in us and through us, whatever it is that we're doing. Jesus who calls us, you see, is also a come from away. He is one who did not count equality with God, something to be grasped, but who emptied himself to enter our airspace, who meets us wherever we are in the midst of whatever we may be doing at any given moment and says, follow me. You don't have to be anybody else. Follow me. Be who you are. See what you have. And I will help you do what matters to God. Three years ago on Wednesday, Jesus called my mother again. I imagine she may have heard, follow me, Barbara, one more time. Take my hand. I know you're tired. You're weak. You are worn. Your big heart has exhausted itself. Come away with me and I will give you rest. She died just a hair too soon for me. I was planning to visit her that very week, but she died before I could get there. And I am grateful there was no stroke or broken hip or extended lingering or suffering and no COVID and no lockdown. She just ran out of gas. She used all the energy she had up to the very last minute, following Jesus for 91 years. Follow me, Jesus calls today to TLC. Not unlike the people of Gander, you are a remarkable band of faithful followers who also show humility, decency, and a let's just get to it sensibility of the human spirit. You do amazing work serving your neighbors. The challenge for your next chapter will be to channel some of that energy into forming new disciples to join you in that work. That starts with first getting to know your neighbors and meeting them where they are on their terms. 
Mike mentioned already, the transition team is beginning to work on this now. So that in the context of trust and relationship, you introduce your neighbors to the Jesus you know and invite them to follow him alongside of you. Sometimes the following might come first. You don't have to be anyone else to do that. Be who you are, see what you have and do what matters to God. Amen.